In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to God. I love it when there are parables offered. That means half of my job is done. Because Christ often will explain himself. Sometimes better than others. Uh, and in this time he more or less gives the entire explanation of everything he was saying. So I think I can end my homily now in the name of the <laughs> But wait, there's more. <clears throat> the gospel that falls on any given Sunday is the gospel that was intended for that Sunday. Of course it was, Father, what are you talking about? It, it, it was meant both uh, liturgically and lectionarily for that Sunday. But there is always a reason for our salvation and for our edification that that particular gospel proclamation happens to be read on that Sunday. And here's what I mean by that for today anyway. This is a parable about the sower and the seeds. And it's almost a simplistic uh, uh, story that he's telling, but it, 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 it hits home properly. These people were fairly agrarian. They would understand good planting and poor planting and whatnot. And Christ makes very clear that this is the word of God. The seeds that the sower is sowing is the word of God. Some will hear it and do something with it. Some will hear it and squander it. Some will try and give it a good faith uh, attempt uh, to do something with it in their lives, or to allow something to be done with it, rather, in their lives. And still will be cluttered by the cares of the world and will lose focus and lose sight of it and ultimately perhaps even abandon it. And then those who are compared to the good soil are those who receive the word of God and through patience bring it to fruition. And this is good soil. Patience is the key. He gives this whole elaborate explanation of the parable. But then he, it's, it's oftentimes at the very end. It's, you, the, the rub comes at the end a lot of the time. Patience. The key here is patience. Many of us have found our way to the Orthodox Church, not having been born into it, but having discovered this odd little group of people that worships in a very, very different way than that to which we're accustomed. Or, maybe we had never had any faith of any kind, or any uh, churching, at least, of any kind, and we stumbled upon this little fat man in a dress and followed him to church. <laughs> And discovered, well, he's weird enough for me to come back a couple more times. And many of us have discovered orthodoxy and thought, you know, that is for me. Maybe it's been 50 years, maybe 20, maybe half of a year. And we meant it, and we still mean it. And we fail a lot of the time. Sometimes it's a question on any given day what kind of soil we are. That's for you to determine, with the help of the Holy Spirit and by grace. I think every morning, or maybe even at the end of the day, might be a better time to assess what type of soil you are. What kind of soil have I been today? Uh, on any given day, I'm usually kind of that, that third tier, or sometimes that second tier. I'm the sleepy. I'm the sleepy soil. You and me both, kid. <laughs> That's an assessment that we must make by, through prayer and by grace with the help of the Holy Spirit, what kind of soil we are. But when we hear this <coughs> parable of the sower sowing seeds on a day like today, where we have watered three seeds in the waters of baptism, and these seeds will be nurtured and they will grow and they will bring forth by grace with the help of their parents and with the parish and the church, they will grow and they will nurture and become good soil. But I will carry the metaphor farther in a more practical means. These particular children are the seeds of a new parish. These particular families come from an hour and a half and change away. You may or may not know this, but St. Andrews has a mission parish, and I think we've already established that. Over the last year, we have a mission parish in Culpeper, which is also an hour and a half away. We also now have 
mission efforts going on down in the Middle Peninsula in the Northern Neck. And these are the seeds of that new mission. Ultimately, that new mission. Now, we have not been given a blessing to found a new mission yet. We've, we've been sent out by Christ to till the soil and plant the seeds. And so the seeds of a mission are, are planted and growing. And three more souls are added to that group that will ultimately form a new mission. Now, it is a mission that takes its life from the Mother Church, St. Andrews. But there's a reason you won't see them every Sunday. They live far away. Close enough that we can hear that they're hungry, but far enough away that they're not going to make it here every Sunday. But we bring the church to them. Twice a month, Father Adam is down there now on the Middle Peninsula, pulling the weeds and nurturing the seeds of this, what will ultimately become a new mission parish. How appropriate that we hear the, the parable of the sower and the seed. Because what every priest wants to see when we talk about the word mission is in, 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 in three days' time, you're going to have a thousand people in this mission and it will thrive and flourish, uh, what have you. But what it requires is patience. When you plant a seed, it takes work. Everybody knows what kind of a garden Jay usually has. It's gorgeous. <laughs> And everybody knows what kind of a garden I usually have. It's atrocious. <laughs> Jay is meticulous in his gardening and has many years' experience and makes beautiful things come out from the earth because he's very patient about it. Very, very patient about it. I, I have been in his garden, and it is the envy of any garden that I've ever seen. It's a true story. He's got, he's got skills. My garden is usually like, well, that was a good effort. <laughs> It takes both patience and time, I suppose, and whatever. But uh, it requires attention. And it requires dedication. And it requires devotion. And it requires diligence and discipline. Oh, that word and ringing in my ears. Discipline it requires. And it requires patience. So we do now plant more seeds, three more seeds, in the fertile soil of the Middle Peninsula. And we will continue to tend to and water these seeds. And in the Lord's good time, and through our patience and trust, these seeds will bring forth a mission to the glory of God, filled with people who are tending to the soil of their hearts daily by grace, with the help of the Holy Spirit to grow themselves and nurture themselves in the way of the Lord. These parents will nurture their children, and these children will grow. These parents will nurture themselves, and these children will see their faith, and their faith will grow. And through patience and diligence and discipline, by God's grace, will pour forth, will grow forth, will come to fruition this thing. You see... It's not something that they do alone or that we do alone. We do it together. The Lord said to go and baptize all nations. The Lord sent 12 guys into the world to conquer it through humility and through spreading the gospel. 12. The apostles are responsible for spreading the gospel. We have a mission going on in Culpeper. We have whatever it will become in the northern neck middle peninsula. We're sent as well to plant and nurture seeds. And I'll tell you, it isn't just a nice thing, isn't that nice? Churches are getting planted here and there and everywhere. But when you have something, you have a garden and you have things planted, you must provide fertilizer. Or you won't get very good stuff. You won't have the rich soil. What makes the soil rich here or anywhere else that we might venture out into? What makes the soil rich? It is sacrifice, humility, and prayer. Now that you're aware that this is going on, now you have a responsibility. You have before you freshly tilled soil. 
It must be watered and nurtured through prayer. Your prayers. You may not go there very often, or ever for that matter. But your prayers are what keeps it going. Your prayers for the building up of the church. Your prayers for the salvation of every person in this new effort. Your prayers for yourself. Your prayers for your priest. Who clearly is out of his mind. <laughs> for taking that on too. But this is only possible through grace. And through your prayers. This is the church's job to grow. When the Lord has made a fertile ground, what happens when you see a plant? It sends out runners, doesn't it? Plants have ways. If you left your garden alone, and you had plants that actually are supposed to grow there instead of invasive species, they will stay there, and they will seed themselves at the end of their growing season. And the next year, there will be more of them. If you have left alone to do their thing, they will propagate other plants. Plants have a way of surviving. If we treat the church like fertile soil with blossoming, fruitful vines, vines will send out other vines and plant in other places. And that's done by care. It's done by diligence and patience. So I charge you, each and every one of you, to pray for the missionary efforts of not only St. Andrews, but every other place that is venturing out to, to plant missions and to bring the seed to all places, to bring the word of God to all places and let it become planted first in the hearts of every man you encounter. By your prayers, the Lord's will may be done. With your cooperation, the Lord's will is accomplished. The Lord is not a magician. He came among us, became one of us, and expects us to work alongside of Him. I have work to do, and I have you to help me do it. Take up your cross and follow me. We have work to do. It's later than you think. There's work to be done. Get to it. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to God.